All right, welcome welcome to day 166 on my journey to 2000 ELO on chess.com. Looks like we get the black pieces against the 1619. And I'm going to, yeah, so we get a London. And I actually learned about a way that you can play this that uh, basically transforms this into a Faro Khan. And I guess it was if I took immediately. I still want to take. And now we do have a Carl Khan, actually. With the bishop out. And if I go here, he's gonna he's gonna drop the bishop back, I'm sure. But maybe he takes. Wait. What is this? He's going to lose the bishop? Oh, he's taking with the queen. Okay. I'm gonna castle. And then think about pushing this pawn. I definitely wanna push e5. Not even gonna think. I think he has to take. And I'll probably take with the knight. Okay. And we get the bishops off. Or the, the dark square bishop off. So now we think, I guess. The question is, do I retreat the bishop or do I just protect the bishop? I don't think the bishop belongs in that square anyway, but where do I want it? Where's a better diagonal? Maybe back here so I can go here. I feel like on c7 it might be in the way of my queen a little bit, but it's also protected. What am I afraid of? If I move here, am I afraid of c4? I'm gonna bring the rook out because I want the rook out anyway. It might not be completely accurate because there's potentially some tricks involved with you know this f7 pawn, but I also have tricks. Okay. So looking here. Let's just drop the bishop back now. I could bring my queen up 
to do a couple things, but chiefly to threaten this, to keep this knight here. I have the idea of maybe going here. The knight has to move. I guess he doesn't technically have to move, or it can take. But now I have this move, now that I'm guarding my knight. Which might be beneficial, just to create luft, but also kick the queen to a different square. Oh, what is going on here? I don't know where that... I don't know where that background... I didn't even look at my camera. Sorry about that. I didn't even know where the, that background was coming from. Alright, so we get this move. Hmm. So I can trade. I can also attack the queen, which I quite like the idea of. But then, does he have this? That doesn't matter. Let's attack the queen. Let's see what the queen does. I want to... I want to move this queen. I can't believe I didn't notice the background thing. Okay, so I have this move now. But what does that really do? I could take here. And then maybe go here. I think the queen is not well placed there. But the question is, how do I take advantage of that? So I could go here, move queen moves and maybe go here. So, do I attack the queen again immediately, and then I can take here, if king takes, then I have this check to get the bishop. I kind of don't want to take like here. That's that's the problem is I really don't want to do this. But I think I might need to. I think I might need to. And I took a painfully long time to make that decision. So if the queen moves somewhere like right here, for example, I have this move, which hits this pawn and hits the bishop. And I don't know how white deals with that. I also have potential sacrifices here. Oh, he just hangs his queen. I mean, that surely is not intentional. Man just a, a poor mistake by my opponent there. Let's take a look at the game. I don't know. So I wonder where, why the... I don't know where that picture is from. The picture that was up there. It's I don't see it on any of my tabs, my screens, nothing. I don't know where that came from. It was a nice picture. I guess that's what my OBS thought the game review was. So it feels good, 95.2 accuracy. Nice. Um, 
It said I played as a 2400. Insane. There's no way. All right. So. So these are all book moves. So I think that taking right here is the line right here that goes for sure into the Karl Khan. It's just the bishop is out here, which doesn't happen in all the Karl Khan lines. But it's like basically a Karl Khan structure. So that wasn't good. So I knew this wasn't good. So I should have taken here. I took here. He takes here. And then I just take the pawn. Queen e2. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. It's a lot of pressure on this h file. But engines are unafraid of pressure. So this was just a, a good move. What was the best move? Bishop c7 is actually the best move according to the engine. I don't know why. I hate when it does that. That's the best move. So bringing my rook up is better. So knight e4 was even better now. Where does the queen normally go? h6. I mean, that's actually... That's logical. To put your queen there. But this was fine. And then obviously the blunder. But I, my plan was... He moves the queen. It says queen e3. e3. Oh, okay. So it senses the danger. It wants to trade. Or c1. Yeah, it senses danger. It needs you need to be back here. It, it understands that there's going to be pressure here and pressure on the bishop. But let's say he did a move like this. So f5, h5, a6 are all good. I was looking at this move. And that's not as good because of knight d4. Oh, you just block and protect. Wow, what a great move. But everything else is... So that's the only move that equalizes, though. You'd have to find knight d4. Otherwise, my my uh, my plan works. You have to sack the rook for an exchange. Or you have to... You play this to block. Then you just lose the bishop. So knight d4 was a saving move that I didn't see. All right, let's play another game here. Let me get my actual... Okay, so we're 1676. This is a new peak. Let's keep going. Let's keep climbing. Sixteen seventy. Get the black pieces again. Let's play an actual or er, wait, yeah, the black pieces again. Let's play an actual Karo Khan. We get the advance. So I like this early C5 move, putting pressure immediately on the center. And I'll get my knight out, and then I'm going to take, probably, I'll probably play his pawn here to protect this pawn. Yeah, we'll take. Now I'll bring the bishop out in the knight. So I'm already thinking about moves like queen b6 to put more pressure on this pawn and already in here. I'm thinking about getting my knight out, um, but first I'm going to play e6. I'm also thinking about a6, uh, so I can bring my bishop out to a more active square. But what I'm going to do is put my knight here. Opponent is going to put their bishop here. Yep. That is the smart thing to do. And then now I, I have moves like queen b6, but then this knight move comes into play, and that's not so good. So this knight really on c3 is playing a, an important role. We can pin it potentially if the opponent doesn't castle immediately, but then it's, it's not so much of a threat because then they can just castle when I put my queen there. 
I don't know if I'm making sense, actually. I don't know if that made sense. Now I can't pin the knight. So I could play... Uh, I like bishop e7, just to develop. If they play h3, I'm going to take the knight. If they move the knight, I'm going to take the bishop. Let's castle. And then I want to get a rook to the C file. Like I said, I'm okay taking here. Play a few quick moves to just kind of get get uh, get things going. I kind of want to play B5, but I need to play A6 first. So I want to try to put pressure on d4, that move, what are you doing? What's the idea? He wants to tuck his bishop in, but it's still a really bad move. Now I'm thinking about going here to try to trade this bishop off and get my queen over by the king. It's it's my most important bishop, but if I can trade it for the other bishop, I think that's fine. And then now I've, I'll have double pressure on d4 and my queen will be lined up with the king with a weakened pawn structure. He shouldn't take, but he might. If he doesn't take, I'm going to take, and then I'm going to take. Unless he puts his like queen right here and takes back with the queen. Well, he can't take back with the queen, what I'm talking about. He can protect the pawn, though. Or he can go queen d2 or something. Actually, queen d2... Wouldn't that hang the d4 pawn? Okay. So he's trying to get his rook over? I don't know. This is crazy. Oh, actually I should take with this knight. Because then I'm threatening this pawn as well. But if I take with this knight, I'm opening the C file up. Let's just take the pawn. Let's not fret over which pawn both are going to fall. Okay. It's such a strange move. I mean, you want your rook over here. Your, your bishop is not hanging. What can I do here? I mean, I have this. Hangs this knight. I can take with the queen. I hate leaving my knight right there, but I think I'm going to... Is there any way to, for him to put double pressure on it? Not really, I'm just going to take the other pawn. And then get out like a thief in the night. This king is a little bit weak, but I don't have to win the game right now. I have to remember that. I don't have to win the game immediately. I'm up two pawns. Let's trade some pieces. Let's put some pressure on the position. I gotta stop trying to just win the game because this king is so weak. That those things come naturally you know out of good positions good play i mean i'm always looking for tactics but it's it's uh it's not good to just live and die by tactics
When's the last time I was up on time? This is crazy. Famous last words. So I have to think about what I'm going to do if he slides his rook over, which is a very natural move. To just slide your rook over, attack the queen. I can go here, which threatens this check. If the queen moves, which I like, um, I can also slide my queen back here. Uh, here doesn't seem as good because of this move, but he doesn't have that available yet. If I go here, he can't go here because my knight protects. But I could see a world in which maybe he does like find a way to dislodge this knight. Let's see. Oh. One by abandonment. So opponent abandoned the game after dropping two pawns. All right, well, let's take a look. Wow, 1684. I'm uh, moving up. 1700 on the horizon. 98.8. I'm getting reported for cheating. All right, let's take a look. I'm playing amazing. Look at this. Opening and middle game, both just, just amazing. Awesome. I'm feeling pretty good today. I shouldn't press my luck and go for another one. But... Alright, so this is basically... Theory. Until... I mean, here is fine. You take... So Rook over is good, but it's not the best. What's the best move? Rook C is the second best move. A6 is better. Yeah, a6, I just, I hate the knight coming here to, to b5, so a6 makes sense. Yeah, this is just a bad move. It's, it's such a weakening move and you don't have to play it. That's the problem is like, this idea is not that good. Like putting your, putting your bishop on this completely closed diagonal for the whole game. Like the engines like go here, I mean, trade it off, tr threaten to trade it off for this knight, because where's this knight going to go? Like I can go here, get it taken. I can go, I took my e7 square away. I can't really take this pawn yet. I could trade it for the bishop and that opens up the rook. So this move is very, makes a lot of sense. This move makes no sense. And if you can trade and ruin my pawn structure and isolate this pawn, that's, that's a great advantage. Yeah, look at this. Great move, is that the best move? Yeah, bishop g5 is the best move because look how weak Mr. King is. In this move, I didn't understand. I thought he was going to put a rook here, which he probably was until I threatened his bishop. And then taking the pawn. And then, like I said, if, if rook here, I think I would have gone queen f5. It's the second best move. Queen f6 is best. But the reason is, I would be looking at this square, and if the queen did something like this, you're winning a piece. Oh, wait, I mean, uh, okay, assuming he didn't hang his queen. Let's put his queen somewhere, right here. So you're either winning a piece or you're winning the exchange. Well, you're kind of, yeah, so you can move the king, drop the exchange, or lose a piece or trade trade the bishop sorry not lose a piece but trade the bishop but look how weak this king is that was my idea is to keep my queen here but i guess i mean it, I, the only thing i do agree that it should be on the dark complex which is probably why queen f6 is better but i think i would have played queen f5 all right yeah a couple really high accuracy games i uh i mean i know this one was only what 17 moves so it's not like this isn't tech i mean i played what 15 book moves and played a couple moves um so it's not like super impressive but it's just good to get back to some winning chess so i appreciate you watching thank you and good luck on your chess i'll see you back tomorrow